All right, let's clear one thing up once and for all. The laser is not the same thing as silver light. And no, it's not doomed to meet the same fate. They both run .NET code inside of the browser, sure, but that's where the similarities end. Silverlight launched in 2007. It was Microsoft's answer to a gap in the web. Netflix relied heavily on it from about 2008 to 2013 to stream high quality video with DRM. Now, here's the thing though Silverlight was a plugin. You had to install it, your browser had to support it. And if the plugin wasn't there, well, nothing worked. Microsoft pushed very hard for adoption. They even streamed the 2010 Super Bowl using Silverlight. But Silverlight wasn't alone. Adobe Flash, Shockwave, they were everywhere powering games, animations, and even full-blown apps in the 2000s. Then everything changed. The iPhone happened in 2007. And Apple made one thing very clear. No browser plugins. That meant no Flash, no Silverlight, no Shockwave. And why? Well, all of these different plugins was a security risk. It was a battery drain. And they don't fit the mobile first that Apple really wanted. So if your app needed a plugin, well, it would not work on iPhones. Meanwhile, mobile traffic exploded in the early 2010s. If you weren't mobile friendly, you were invisible. That was the beginning of the end. From 2015 and onwards, browsers started killing off plugin support. Chrome blocked them by default in 2015, Firefox dropped support for them in 2017, and Microsoft Edge never supported plugins. By 2020, Flash was gone, Shockwave ended in 2019, and Silverlight reached the end of life in October 2021. Now, fast forward to Blazor. John Galloway once said Microsoft kept Blazor experimental for quite some time because they didn't want another Silverlight situation. I've heard things like, I don't trust Microsoft on front end. Remember Silverlight? Now here's the difference. Silverlight failed because browsers killed plugins. Blazor doesn't need a plugin. It runs on WebAssembly or WASM. And WebAssembly is not a Microsoft thing. It's an open standard created by the W3C WebAssembly Working Group. It's include engineers from Google, Mozilla, Microsoft, Apple, and others working together to make sure that WebAssembly runs everywhere. It is supported by Chrome, Firefox, Edge, Safari, desktop, and mobile since around 2019. You don't have to install anything. You just visit the site and everything just works. WebAssembly runs compiled code like C Sharp in the browser, fast, safe, and efficient. And that's Blazor WebAssembly. But Blazor is actually so much more. It has the Blazor server version that runs on the server, but feels instant in the browser. And then we have Blazor Hybrid, where we can use Blazor inside of desktop and mobile apps with .NET MAUI. It's an open standard. It's part of a modern .NET. It's actively developed, and Blazor isn't tied to a dying model in any way or form. It's built for the future of the web. So Silverlight, Flash, Shockwave, they disappeared because the web moved on. Blazor is moving with it. In fact, many front-end frameworks today 
are heading towards server-side rendering for SEO and performance. And Blazor's already there. If you are a C-sharp developer who wants to build modern web apps without drowning in JavaScript, Blazor is definitely worth your time. It isn't a comeback. It's a whole new chapter. So thank you for watching. And please like, share, subscribe, and all of that stuff. You know what to do. And hopefully this has cleared up some questions about the connections between Blazor and Silverlight. There are no connections. See you in the next video.